in the last recording, we wrapped up on Romans chapter 5 and how Paul was transitioning out of justification and hinting on with just one or two small verses or hints within Romans chapter 5 concerning the next step of our salvation, which is the sanctification part of it. We now get to chapter 6 in Romans. And Paul immediately starts this chapter on a completely different note. You can sense when you read Romans chapter 6, even from verse 1, that there is a greater sense of, I can't say urgency, it's not the right word, but there's a greater sense of reverence almost. There is, you pick it up immediately, there is a deeper spiritual undertone to what Paul is going to start to reveal in Romans chapter 6 and 7 and 8. I have done my best to represent Romans chapters 1 to 5 and reveal the content of justification. And I must admit that the first five chapters were familiar in the sense of I understood the concept of justification. It is connected to the presentation of our gospel, which is primed for even unbelievers to receive. You can take the gospel message that is represented in the first few chapters of Romans and speak it to an unbelieving worldly person. And that gospel, when they receive it, would quicken faith would, and, and has the power, as Paul says in Romans chapter 1 verse 16, to, to save that person, to, to regenerate their spirit, to waken them up in a sense. Romans chapter 6 and onwards does not address unbelievers. The content in Romans chapter 6 and onwards is deeper. There's a deeper undertone of spiritual message. And it is evident when Paul, even in Romans chapter 6, verse 1, starts with this blatant question, which we will get into shortly, almost to arrest the mind and to say you cannot think. He uses the word God forbid. We will get into that as well, what that statement really means. But even in the first verse of chapter 6 of Romans, he arrests the reasoning mind and he says, quit that thinking. Quit that reasoning from a human perspective and come deeper. And it's on this note that I want to mention to you that I have to take this slow. I have to break it open, not just for you. I will, I will plainly admit that the more I study Romans, the more deeper I seem to be pulled into the hidden aspects of the knowledge that we can that we can learn. And listen, I am not being over spiritual here. I'm certainly not being over spiritual. If you take time and you start to read, really read the verses, and you stop to take account of each word, and you look at the words and you find the patterns, and the cross references and the and the and and you weigh up 
the meanings and what Paul is really writing. You go deeper. It's not just surface content anymore. It's not just easy to understand where the reasoning mind can also start to still reason and, and, and understand. This goes deeper. And it's hard to put into words. But your spirit picks up on it. And I'm basically just saying that I sense a greater responsibility here to present this information. I would almost like to say there's a greater reverence to, to really bring the information through with clarity and context and conciseness. I don't want to mess things up. Because there is such value. In what Paul's going to get into. This represents the next step in the life of a Christian believer. Justification is the easy step. It's the absolute fundamental basics of becoming a Christian. And it's all by faith. But the thing is, the work has been done by God. God has declared salvation for those who believe in his son. And his son has achieved the, con the, the, the works through, through the cross and the resurrection. Jesus Christ has achieved that. And that work is imputed to the person who believes in his son. Justification is easy. And it's easy to teach in that regard. This next step referred to as sanctification is taking a big step up in spiritual context and it's not as easy to teach because what I'm going to attempt to do is to make plain concepts of the spirit which according to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 is foolishness to the mind who attempts to still reason things out. I do feel a much bigger sense of responsibility in this regard. But I'm up for it. And as long as I take it slow, and as long as my heart is truthful and open and filled with the word of God and the motives of my heart is to teach and to to not instruct in the way the words of God in the pages of the Bible instruct I just have the need or the desire to point you to the words on the pages in our King James Bible. To point to certain words, to provide some cross-reference and context so that you as the listener can weigh it up for yourself and that the words can teach you. In your spirit there are not many Christians that delve into the deeper things of their salvation which is the sanctification which results in the glorification and these things are primed for the ages to come these things start to change your heart start to kill off the flesh justification does not do that justification saves your soul Justification is the guarantee of, of reaching heaven, of being in God's presence, of uh, averting God's wrath. Justification is a gift of God. It is offered to you on a, on a plate, if I could use that expression. Sanctification 
is on a whole new level because now it requires commitment from you. You are the one who is now got to put your time and your effort into seeking truth, into studying the word, into allowing the word to start to, to wash you, to renew your mind, and then to give yourself over and to obedience to what the word starts to work within you. The word of God is spirit and truth. If you've ever wondered what it means to walk in the spirit, to walk after the spirit, as Paul teaches us in Romans chapter 8, which is actually the end result of what we are now going to get into in Romans 6 and 7. Getting Romans 6 and 7 into your heart and into your mind, being renewed and washed by Romans 6 and 7 is going to result in the outward display that is represented in Romans chapter 8. A Christian walk that is given over to the Spirit. And the words of God within you, through study, through renewal, through commitment, the words of God in you is the Spirit of God. Poured out within you. And that's how you walk after that spirit. There is a greater commitment upon my shoulders to teach this. But there's also a greater commitment to you and upon you as the listener of this teaching. Because the moment you hear and receive these words and this lesson in the spirit, the responsibility of this lesson and its information now rests upon you. You have now been enlightened to truth. What are you going to do? with that truth are you going to take it receive it and act upon it and be faithful to those words and offer it up to god and say lord take me further based on this truth or are you going to be negligent because now you cannot be ignorant the moment you hear this lesson and the truth that comes from it, you are no longer ignorant about it. You now have that truth and you can act upon it and be faithful to it or you can push it aside and neglect it. It, all, it, it always reminds me of Jesus' parable of the master giving talents to his servants five two and one talents going away and then coming back expecting an investment on those talents that is what truth is that is what romans 6 7 and 8 is going to require of you once you receive it you are going to have received that talent and the Lord will expect an investment on that truth. Let me stop right here. And just encourage you. As much as I'm speaking to myself right now. As much as I understand that this responsibility is on me as well. I want to encourage you to continue with me in this journey. I want to encourage you to follow after God's words and to act upon it.
continue with me. Let's learn from God's word. Let's bring him honor and glory and praise through that which we can offer him from a, as, as a living sacrifice. What a privilege it is to have Christ formed within us. What an honor it is to have his life glorified through us. And if you truly love the Lord, and if you truly believe that the words that we are reading in the King James Bible are the purified, perfected words of God, the will of our Father, and if you truly have that connection with God and trust these words that God reveals them to you for a greater purpose than just trying to make your life difficult here on earth and, and, and burdening you with this responsibility. There is a purpose. There is a glory. There is an honor that far exceeds that which we are experiencing here right now. This life is nothing compared to what we are called unto towards that prize of the high calling of God, which is in the ages to come. We walk by faith here. This time, these 70, 80, 90 years we have on this earth is literally a time of showing your faith to the Lord to say, Lord, that what I see around me, that which I desire, those riches, those jobs, that those goals that I seek here counts for nothing. It's vanities. If you truly believe that and you open your heart to these words and you look towards what God has destined for us than being stuck in this world with the lusts of the flesh, the lusts of the eyes and the pride of life. You are setting yourself up for eternity. And not just that, it's not just for you in eternity. As a matter of fact, it's got nothing to do with us. It is for the glorification of Jesus Christ. Our lives contribute in measure to the exaltation of Jesus Christ in the ages to come. Jesus will be glorified in his church, in his body. You and I will contribute to the exaltation of Jesus Christ in all eternity. How can you not choose to partake in that, to increase the glory of our Lord? This is what we need to step out in faith for. This is what we need to believe these words are leading us towards. Again, I say, Paul wrote, the first five chapters of Romans to bring us to this point. But what do you do from this moment onwards is going to count not for what we've come through, but not for the life here, but for the glory and the honor of Jesus Christ in the ages to come. And that's the commitment and that's the faith that we need to step out in. Not being blinded by the things here in this world. Not considering these things as of any importance. I understand we have responsibilities here to do job and family and, so, and, and church. But these things 
should be subject to the values and the truth and the life of Christ that is being fashioned within us as we are renewed day by day by day by the Word of God. So what does Paul start to speak about in Romans chapter 6 that is so different, that is so deeper, that is so more profound from a spiritual point of view than what is mentioned so far in Romans chapters 1 to 5? This is what we're going to get into. You can grab your King James Bible and you can read Romans 6, 7 and 8 right now. The answers are right there in the Bible. All I'm going to do is expound on certain key words and things that I want to draw to your attention that, that honestly blew me away. <laughs> blew me away in the sense of, wow, Lord, I've never seen this before. This is incredible. If you start to read the word and understand Romans chapter 6 from the context of how I would like to show you, and in the context of sanctification, you are going to see things that you've missed. You're going to see things that are going to quicken you, renew you, bring understanding to say, Lord. Truthfully, there is much more to salvation that I than, than what I ever knew. Okay. We will officially get into Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through to 13 in the next video. In actual fact, we may not we, we may not even get to Romans chapter 6, verse 3 in the next video. There's already a lot to say just in the first two verses. But anyway, we will take this step by step. Stay with me in this journey. Stay with me in this journey. I'm doing this not just for myself. Honestly, I'm doing it for myself too. But my heart overflows because I want to, I want to bring this to your attention too. So that you can be blessed as much as I have been blessed with the increase of understanding and knowledge and wisdom that comes from these words in Romans 6, 7 and 8. Pertaining to the next step of our salvation. <laughs>